welcome to Affliction Sharecoded, a podcast where we sharecode some of the world's so-called afflictions and rate their plausibility on a scale of 1 to 5. I'm Minnie Kim, and today we will be sharecoding Second Chances. Now, I know what you're thinking. At face value, Second Chances are always good. Everyone messes up, and they should be given a second chance to show their full potential. But it's all a debate, an opinion-allowing vacuum. Because some people don't want criminals to be reintegrated back into society. They don't believe in parole. They don't believe in getting back with cheating husbands, wives, boyfriends, and etc. And more bad things that have a bad connotation to some people. But more specifically, people have a second chance in academics. And I say this obviously, and I think this is the biggest thing, because my world purview has not widened enough to just even conceive all of the things that I said before. Things that people are notably not supposed to get a second chance in per our educational institutions. It's how it's made. For example, retakes or retests or re-quizzes. Some schools have them. Some schools don't. I like to think that it's all for a reason, and that is why others have the common decency of thinking that because it's all for a reason, those people that have retakes, those schools that give people the privilege of retaking their quizzes, their tests, have it all. And that I totally get. Perhaps the test questions were not to their liking, it was boring, perhaps they lost focus, perhaps they had an excruciating stomachache in the middle and had to give up to save embarrassment and much more. But it's not passion for second chances that prompted me to write this, it's more anger-like. A sudden burst of realization, should I say about the complete atrocity in giving people second chances when everyone else do not have access to that second chance. Because it's not about whether everyone agrees to second chances that make it fair or not. It is the premise that everyone implements it. That everyone has that chance and accessibility. That if there is rehabilitation, better make sure all criminals have a chance to be rehabilitated. That if there is a retake, better make sure that everyone can take it, no matter the circumstances. And I understand why the circumstances would apply to criminal justice, but not essentially to academics. And I totally get why a school would not allow a student to retake a quiz or rewrite an essay if they had AI write it for them and did not do their own work. But there are policies that do bug me, and I'm sure bugs a lot of people too, and that has been attested by my entire family as well as some other people who cannot make the base, who cannot make the best use of these retake policies. Because the way I see it, we let go of trying to make the semantics of justice align to what is ideologically or morally right, but about chance. So yes, from my perspective, equity matters more than equality. People get what they deserve, and that's coming from privilege, but let's just not virtue signal me into saying that this is all about food, water, gender, and racial rights, etc. It's about what matters to me and perhaps you right now as you are listening to this podcast. As a student, trying to navigate what both of those words even mean outside of the academic world. And my thinking gives me the verdict that equity is more important. And making new policies while hiding behind the face of equality is frankly disconcerting. I try to make these afflictions and issues serious. And that's kind of my job in this podcast, make them serious and tell you why it's not so serious after all in the hopes that you already perceived it as serious. Or maybe I just heightened your anxiety level. Because of our society right now. And of course, this applies to almost anything that people find unfair. The unfortunate fact that we learn from the tender age of whatever kindergarten accepts people is that we're all different and that we should respect our differences 
which truth be told is not as stressed in Korea as it is in other Western countries. So theoretically, it cannot be just, cannot be equitable nor equal that everyone gets a second chance because each situation is inherently different. And that alone is a different matter from simply being different as human beings. And I realize how existential this rant has gone. It doesn't look good for an Asian female student, but here is my second chance that entirely depends on whether you want to finish listening to this or not. Platitudes from the internet, more specifically Pinterest, because those were the only things I could find on Google. Platitude number one, just remember that some people will be worth a second chance. Correct, but my question is, and I'm sure the question of the rest of people having problems with second chances is that how do you know which one deserves a second chance or not? What if someone happened to read this quote while strolling through Pinterest and decides to forgive their infinitely loyal yet broke one promise friend? But what if someone in the exact same situation didn't read this quote, wasn't inspired by this quote, and decided not to forgive them. I call that imbalance in the universe. However small it may be, it may have destroyed someone's life. So there is imbalance in our deciding of who deserves a second chance, who is worth a second chance. And I think it is inherently wrong for that choice to be in the hands of the people forgiving. But then again, there really is no other alternative. You can't just go to a shrink. Actually, you can, but you can't just go to one shrink for the rest of your life and expect several billions of people to do the same thing. The same advice isn't given at the same time, at the same circumstance, and I find that sad. Not unjust, because really there isn't any other alternative, but just sad that we couldn't do anything better about it. Platitude number two. Sometimes you need a second chance because you weren't quite ready for the first. The answer to this I find very simple. That's life. That is a meritocratic society. And of course we could argue tyranny of merit. In which case we could make an exception, but unfortunately, if we start, we probably cannot stop. There are many exceptions to our meritocratic society, and I put that in quite a sarcastic tone because if you've ever read any kind of book at all, there is always tyranny of merit. So I guess if we started to make exceptions, it would never end. And there's no guarantee that anyone would listen to our exceptions in the first place. So that is down the so that is down the drain as well. Platitude number three. Second chances are not given to make things right, but are given to prove that we could Second chances are not given to make things right, but are given to prove that we could be better even after we fall. And this is my personal favorite, because it is kind of true. It has that hint of veracity, and I like it. If we truly do concede that second chances are to prove that we could be better even after we fall, which honestly doesn't matter when extracted and applied into the real world, then it is just romantic. It is a beautiful sight to see that one failure does not equate to two, and two failures don't equate to three. And we're back to the very beginning of the cyclical routine. None of the things I say in this podcast are going to be realistic, but that's kind of the point. If we can't fix it realistically, why don't I fix it ideologically? There are words and phrases I say in this podcast that I look back on a year later and think, why the hell did I say that? That is so stupid. 
that is so inappropriate and that makes me sound shallow and, for that matter, young. And I don't give myself the pleasure of erasing it because I don't think it will be a pleasure. It'll just be erasing it. Some people have already listened to it. I doubt that it'll last in their brains forever. I doubt that they will take the podcast to heart. And I don't think that anyone would be at a loss for me erasing it. So the best I can do with this affliction today is to trust the wise people who wrote it, said it, engraved it, whatever with this quote, and thank them for being optimistic about a thing that we all know very deep inside is screwed to its core because some people will be alienated by the system some people will never get access to that second chance some people will never get that chance that the school thinks is the bar to meet perhaps the only reason they're writing this quote is because they had a second chance in which case I thank them for being optimistic and being pragmatic enough at the same time to understand that other people might not be at this mercy. I hope everyone listening to this gets a second chance at one point in their lives, and I hope that it's not just a fluke, that it's not something that they don't value in the first place. It should be something that they inherently thought was an important part of their lives that they really thought could do better the second time, the third time, and if lucky, maybe even the fifth time. And I hope that in other words, in their reception of second chances. I give the share coding of second chances a two. This podcast was written and produced by me, Minnie Kim. If you have any comments or reviews, please feel free to write any and all thoughts on your podcast reviews. If you would like to suggest an affliction for me to share code, please email me via afflictionsharecoded at gmail.com. To end this podcast, I'm going to ask, did you have any notable second chances? Or at least any unnotable second chances? It can be something as simple as between your family. Did I convince you that second chances are a bad thing or a good thing? I mean, I did give that rating a 2. That might be an all-time low. I'll see you next month.